Record numbers of black state school educated children in the UK are entering into university. But unfortunately, when you look at their salaries that they're earning after they graduate from university, they are lower than almost all other ethnic groups. So when you look at the median annual income earned by students from these different ethnic groups 10 years after graduating, we find right at the top of the tree in terms of the value of their salary were the Chinese and mixed white and Asians at £36,500 per year. Then you've got Indian and Asian other who are earning £35,000. Then there's a little bit of a drop down to white graduates who are earning around about £32,000. Then you go down to mixed white and black Caribbean and mixed white and black Africans both at around about £31,000. Then there's a drop down to black African graduates who are earning £30,000 10 years after graduating. For black Caribbean students it's £29,000. Similarly for Bangladeshi and black other students £29,000. And then right at the bottom of the tree if you want to say that are Pakistani graduates who 10 years after graduating were earning only £25,000. So what could some of the reasons be behind our lower salaries as black graduates. Well, the first thing you might think is that, oh, it must be that black graduates or black students, black undergraduates are studying courses that are not as lucrative. And full disclosure, that was me. I studied, I went to the University of Birmingham, so it's a good uni, you know, one of the one of the Russell, Russell Group universities, you know, so one of the top, top unis. However, I decided to go and do media and cultural studies. And let me be frank, I probably wouldn't have got into that uni if I was going to try and do some STEM or business or law or whatever. I just wasn't, I was never on that kind of wavelength. But I went and did media and cultural studies. And frankly, I even kind of knew it at the time. Media and cultural studies was to get me a very lucrative job. However, I am an outlier. Because when you look at the courses that people, that undergraduates of different ethnic groups study, you find that so-called BAME students are much more likely than white students to be studying the higher paying courses, if you want to call them that. To see the, the ones that where we're much more likely are the red, the darker the red, when it gets to like dark, dark red, that means that we're really much more likely to be studying these courses. So for example, black African students and Indian students are much, much more likely than white students to be studying business. And the blue, the darker the blue, the less likely we are in comparison to white undergraduates graduates to be choosing that course. And you see that creative arts, ethnic minority students, much less likely to be studying those. You know, education, agriculture, you know, nursing, English, communications, all those kinds of courses are not the courses on, on, on the whole that black and Asian undergraduates are studying. So if it's not the kind of courses that we're studying, is it to do with the grades that we're getting at university? From what I can tell, this has got to be one of the big answers. Now, when you look at the data, you see that people who graduate from university with higher grades are going to be earning, on average, they're going to be earning much higher than graduates who graduate with lower grades. And this, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, this, this helps to explain the disparity in the salaries that different ethnic groups get, particularly black graduates. Because when you look at the data, whereas 27% of Asian graduates graduate with a first class honours degree, 31% of mixed graduates, 25% of other graduates and 36% of white graduates graduate with a first class honours degree. The figure for black graduates is only 17%. And somewhat related to this is the fact that black undergraduates are much less likely to attend those Russell Group universities and those kind of higher pedigree universities. And this is important because people who attend the higher grade universities universities, if you want to call it, are more likely to get first class honours degrees and even to, well, certainly first class honours degrees. Only around about 6% of black Caribbean undergrads go to a Russell Group University. Only around about 10% of black African graduate, uh, undergrads go to a Russell Group University. And that compares with, for example, about 20% of Indian, white other, white British, and a whopping 40% of Chinese undergraduates go to a Russell Group University. So that means that those students are more likely to get a first class honours degree and thus they're more likely to be earning a higher salary than those, those undergraduates who went to one of the less selective 
quote unquote lower pedigree universities. Now I think I'll leave it for a future video to go into what are some of the underlying factors behind these topics that I've brought up today. I think there are going to be factors to do with of course discrimination in the job market. There's going to be factors to do with discrimination in the education system for absolutely sure. Particularly when we're talking about, let me just quickly say, Black Caribbeans. Black Caribbean students are the children of their parents obviously and when you look at the history of the Caribbeans in this country you find that when they were in the 1950s and 60s and 70s even into the 1980s they were being systematically labeled as educationally subnormal that was the previous non-PC term for special educational needs they were being labeled as being educationally subnormal for no good reason and of course, when you get labeled as such, you're going to be put into these special schools and then you're not going to get a very good level of education. Then you're adding in things like the behavioral issues. They're being labeled as being aggressive and all this sort of stuff. I, in my opinion, I think that's going to, that's going to be a big factor as to why some of the descendants of those elders and, and, you know, those parents and uncles and aunties and so forth are not doing as well, not getting the higher grades in education because it's going to be related to that. And some of those factors are absolutely going to be the case with black African students. There are going to be factors to do with our our backgrounds. You know, have we come as recent immigrants? Do we have English as a second language? Do we live in overcrowded houses where it's hard to study? Is there pressure on us to be working while we're at university and while we're at college, whereas maybe students of other ethnic groups don't have to worry about that sort of stuff too much? So there's going to be all a plethora of potential explanations behind all of these things. But I want to say this. In my last video, the, the video right before this was called Is There a Black British Community? And it led to, I mean, as of recording this video, there are a thousand comments on that video. The thing that gets me really, really sad is that there is a there is a, an enormous amount of sectarianism and and that that is that wasn't my aim with that video. For all of our differences, understand that we have differences. I'm a Ugandan. I'm not exactly the same as a Jamaican. I'm not exactly the same as a Sierra Leonean or a black American for that matter or a, or a Congolese or whatever. Yeah, we're different. I get it. Of course we're different. Viva la différence. We must appreciate our differences and value them. However, I also understand that on the global scale, we are a unit. On the global scale, we are African and African descended people. We can call it whatever you want to call it. If you don't like the term African, call it whatever else you want. But these data show, should show us, at least here in the UK, that we are being affected by very similar dynamics. So we have a lot of commonalities. And if you guys think that we're going to be able to like go into our little tribal ethnic like enclaves and just work everything out for ourselves, you're just wrong. And I just want to make that really clear because I think a lot of, some people might have got the impression that I was trying to sow that kind of division. No, no, absolutely not. We have to be cognizant of our particular backgrounds, absolutely. But if we're gonna actually solve some of these issues, if we're gonna solve some of these, these discrepancies, if we're gonna solve, if we're gonna work all of these things out, we're gonna to have to come together and work them out together, in my opinion. So I hope you're on board with that. I'm all about practical solutions. I'm all about giving some guidance, particularly for our youngsters. If you're watching this and you're a youngster, if you're at uni, or you've just graduated, or you're thinking about going to uni, guys, come to me, man, come to me. Let's talk, let's share ideas about how we can work this out. And let's not be individualistic about it because it's the individualism, in my opinion, and the tribalism that has got us into, in a lot of cases, that has got us into the mess that we find ourselves, not just in this country, but in other countries around the world and in the world as a whole. It's the tribalism, it's the division that helped the continent of Africa to be conquered in the first place. So I'm just going to leave that there anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. YouTube's going to suggest a video here, which you might find enjoyable. And also this is a video here, which I think might kind of, you know, dovetail quite nicely with this particular video. All right, take good care of yourselves. Peace and blessings, and I'll see you next time. Peace.